Hello class, in this video, I'm going to cover 10.4. And um, in this video, it's basically the definitions of what polar coordinates are, and then getting used to them as far as being able to convert back and forth between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates, okay? So here, for example, one, it says plot the point in polar coordinates. Um, and then it also wants us to find the corresponding rectangular coordinates uh, and round our, our um, X and Y values to three decimal places, okay? So the first thing we need to do is understand how we um, uh, plot the point in polar coordinates. So first what you do is you move out however many units of your radius, and then you move at an angle according to what your theta is, okay? So then that point will end up landing somewhere in one of the four quadrants um, or on an axis. So here my r is equal to the square root of three and my theta is equal to 2.33 radians, okay? And so remember, um, as far as radians is concerned, um, two pi radians equals um, 6.28 something something, right? Pi radians is 3.14, blah, blah, blah. Um, and pi over two radians, I think is 1.7 something or another. So let's see, pi over two, clear how that out, pi over two, double arrow, oh, 1.57. 1.57 dot dot dot. So for the radian um, 2.33, if we want to put that in degrees, so we kind of know where that is, um, we can convert that to degrees. So 2.33 radians would be times 180 degrees over pi radians. And so the radian measurements would cancel and you'd be left with degrees, but I don't know what 2.33, oops. 2.33 times 180 divided by pi is about 133.5 degrees, okay? So we know this is 90 degrees, right? There's a 90 degree angle. And then it goes even further, but not quite to 180. So between 90 and 180, um, you're probably talking about right there in the middle, um, clear, 90 divided by two, it's 45 degrees plus 90. So this is about 135 degrees, right in the middle, okay? So ours is 133.5, so it's almost that measurement. But I do need to start at my radius of square root of three, which is approximately um, 1.73. So I'm going to go out 1.73 units from my radius and then go around um, 1.33.5. So it's probably going to be somewhere around there. So remember, your 1.73 is kind of like a circle with a radius of 1.73. And I'm trying to draw this circle, but it's really difficult. Um, I mean, it doesn't look round, but <laughs> you get the idea, right? That there's a circle with that radius of 1.73 and you're just putting the point where the angle, it's on the circle, but it has to be at that angle 133.5 degrees, okay? So your point, your point should exist here in your um, um, second quadrant, okay? Now, as far as converting it to rectangular coordinates, what we and it'll even confirm the location once we convert it to rectangular coordinates. So in rectangular coordinates, um, we know that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So when we come here, um, we're just gonna basically plug in r and plug in um, the radians. Just make sure your calculator is in radian mode when you try to plug in these numbers. So it should be the square root of three, cosine of 2.33, square root of three, sine of 2.33. And if I type those in my calculator, 
and I round them, I get negative 1.192. And for y, if I type this in my calculator in radian mode, I get 1.256. So negative one and then 0.192, and then go up one and a quarter. So it's about right there. It makes sense. Um, it matches the rectangular uh, coordinates for this point. Okay. So it still should, it represents the exact same point. So it should still be in the same location when you graphed it using a rectangular coordinate system. Okay. Um, but the point, this line and this circle is not part of the graph, right? It's just tools that I used to put the point in the correct spot. Um, but you do have to select the correct graph and web assign, and then you do have to enter the coordinates of the point. Now, be careful because I believe in web assign, they already have the parentheses. You just need to type in the first number, comma, the second number. Um, now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, go in the other direction. Okay. So this time they're giving the point in rectangular coordinates, and then we need to graph it, and then we need to find the corresponding polar coordinates. Now, there are up to four different court, uh, polar coordinates for the same um, spot, okay? It's just a matter of using a different angle or uh, like a positive angle versus a negative angle or using positive radius versus negative radius, okay? So we do need two sets. So there are four that exist, but we need only two of them. So let's go ahead and plot it first. Zero for X and negative seven for Y would be right here on the Y axis, the negative Y axis. And if we're trying to figure out with R and theta of R, we know that um, R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. So um, we know that R will basically equal plus or minus the square root of X squared plus Y squared because we're taking the square root of both sides. Um, and we also know that the tangent of theta equals y over x. So that means theta would equal tan inverse of y over x, okay? Now, this one's a little bit more complicated to look at, okay? So over here, we know that x is um, 0, and we know that y is negative 7. And when I square those, I get plus or minus 0 plus 49, which is 49. And the square root of 49 is just 7. But because I took the square root of both sides of this top equation, I do have plus or minus 7, right? Now, over here, though, if you look at tan theta equal, I'm not going to look at this, and I'll show you why I'm not going to look at that. But um, I'm not going to look at this. I'm just going to go back to this other one, OK? Because when I try to do this, y is negative 7, and x is 0. So you're basically asking yourself, tan theta, tan of what angle would be an undefined number, okay? Um, so what theta makes that happen, okay? Now, if you remember the graph of tangent, or if you remember the domain of tangent, the domain of tangent is, um, or tan inverse, is usually negative pi over two to pi over two, because you have these asymptotes at every multiple, um, every width of pi. So this is a pi width, right, from one to the other side. So another pi width over here, you'd have another, um, should probably be scooted over a little bit more. It would be three pi over two. That's a whole nother pi width. And then you'd have another thing here. And in the middle, you'd have another tangent curve, right? Um, and it just keeps repeating that the process in both directions, okay? So what you're asking yourself is for um, uh, when does this angle produce an undefined value? So essentially, where are the asymptotes, okay? And I need all the asymptotes between 0 and 2 pi. So what you end up with getting is that theta would have to equal pi over 2 because that's where all the asymptotes start. And then it's just either going in this direction of pi unit or that direction of pi unit repeatedly. So that is represented by pi k, where k can equal 0, 1, 2, 3, um, and so on and so forth. And then that represents where all the asymptotes are, right? So if I try to take the tangent of 
an angle where these asymptotes exist, I'll get tangent is undefined, okay? And that's exactly what they were asking me to look for, okay? Now, which of these angles, though, are between 0 and 2 pi? I won't know until I start examining some k values. So for k equal to 0, this is just times 0, which means I get um, theta equal to pi over 2. And that is within this um, range here, OK, or domain there. If I get k equal to 1, I would have to do pi over 2 plus 1k, which would be 3 pi over 2. And if I tried to go k equal to 2, I would be doing 2 pi plus this, which would put me over um, the 2 pi. OK, so this value is not in the domain that they gave me for theta. OK, so the only two um, thetas that I have are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now, which ones do we need to use with which radiuses depends? OK, so here are your two sets of coordinates. So if I'm going to have um, r equal to positive 7 and negative 7, then I'm going to have one, um, one point with the negative 7, and then I'm going to have the other point with the positive 7. And then this coordinate would be the one with the smaller r value, and then this coordinate would be the one with the larger r value. OK, um, and so then we have to really use um, some critical thinking here to figure out which one of these two angel angles goes with which one of these, OK? So what I'm going to do here is if I were to go, my r is negative 7, 2, 4, 6, 8. So negative 7, oh, 2, 4, 6, 8. So it would be right here in the middle. This would be 7 or negative 7. Um, and then from there, I would have to move along that circle of radius seven, right, to get to here. But how much did I move? I only moved 90 degrees to get from here to there. So then I should only have 90 degrees here. But since we need to have it in radians, that would be the pi over two measurement. OK, now. Similarly, if I were to have a radius of positive 7, 2, 4, 6, here's my positive 7. Imagine a circle with the radius 7, and I have to move my spot using an angle to get all the way around to down here. Okay, So from here to here is 90 degrees. From here to here is another 90, 180. And from here to here is another 90 degrees, which is um, uh, 210, I believe. Um, so, or something like that, right? What is 270? There you go. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. So it's about 270 degrees, which is equivalent to this radian, 3 pi over 2. So it just depends on where your radius is starting. Is your radius starting at negative and it only goes, has to travel um, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians? Or is your radius positive 70 and travel all the way around 3 quarters of the way um, which is the 3 pi over 2 representation. Um, and then that is it. That's all they wanted me to do was find the two sets of coordinates and then graph it. It is on the negative y axis. OK, but it had this situation going on where tangent was undefined. So we couldn't use our calculator to figure that out. We had to use some other method. And that was the point in why I wanted to bring up this um, example here. OK. Now. Example three says for us to convert um, the polar equation into rectangular form and then sketch the graph. And now we know how to uh, sketch the graphs of rectangular um, functions. So that's what we're going to do here is convert it first and then try to graph it. Remember, we know that um, if I square both sides of this equation, I have r squared. And I know that r squared is x squared plus y squared and negative two squared is four. Well, this is the equation of the circle with radius equal to two and center equal to zero, zero. So I'm just gonna write two 
two and two and two. So that's my radius with the center. And then I'm just going to connect the dots again, trying to draw a circle, but it's never quite perfect. That's pretty close though. Um, so this would be the equation that they want. And then this of course is the graph that they want. Now, the last problem says convert the rectangular equation to polar form and then sketch its graph. So we know that this is R squared and we know that X is R cosine theta. And then if we factor out the R, we get 6P times cosine theta. And then we let R equal zero, that's just a point at the origin. So probably not a whole graph, right? It's just a dot. So the graph is probably going to come from this factor. Um, and if I um, solve for R, I end up with this thing here. And then from there, you can kind of um, plug in some thetas and then figure out what your, what your graph is gonna look like. So for here, I'm gonna put theta equal to zero, theta equal to um, pi over two, theta equal to pi, um, three pi over two, and then two pi. And when I do that, um, cosine of zero is one, so I get six p. Um, theta equal pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so times six p is still zero. Oops, these should be r's, not thetas. If I plug in pi, cosine of pi is negative one, so this would be negative six p. Um, and then cosine of three pi over four, or three pi over two, x value is zero, so that would be zero. And then um, when I plug in two pi, cosine of two pi is one, so this would be six p. So essentially I have, two, four, six P here, two, four, six P here. Um, and so then I'm gonna go no angle. So I'm at zero angle, but six P for R. Here I'm at a radius of zero, but I have to go at an angle of pi over two. It doesn't really matter because my radius is zero. So I'm there. Um, then I have for negative six pi or negative six P radius, I have to go pi units, which means I'm right here again. And then again, my radius is zero, so it doesn't matter the angle, I'm still here. And then 6p radius, and I got to go 2 pi, which is the same spot. So all the graphs have circles. They have a circle here, a circle here, a circle here, a circle here, or circle in the center. And it looks like since those two are my only points that I'm getting, and it's because I chose big inter intervals, zero to pi halves, um, that's why I'm getting that circle on the right-hand side. If I wanted to get a point here and a point there, I could try smaller numbers between zero and pi over two, and it should help me to get there. So I could have picked um, like pi over eight, pi over four, things like that, and it would have helped me get some more points in here. But with those two points, it's enough to pick the correct graph because it's the only graph that has those two points. Um... And that is all we have for this particular section. I will record a secondary video with the uh, content for 10.5.